Okay, so this is Friday, May 23rd. This is the May Mester. This is a class of reviewing the must. And what you want to do, if you're listening by tape, is you want to go ahead and open a Google session on the internet so you have something to review. And we're just beginning now. Um, what you want to do in starting, anytime you have a name, one, I had one student that wrote LOX. Sure, it sounds like LOX. Your job is to spell correctly. So this was Mr. Gene Locks, and he was an attorney somewhere. Did you all read it? If you read a little bit further, he was an attorney. Yeah. Philadelphia, I believe. Mm -hmm. If you read a little bit further, it's somewhere in here that he was an attorney from Philadelphia. So what I want you to do is just Google the, just Google Gene Locks or Google Attorney Locks, Attorney Gene Locks, and see what you get. Attorney Gene Locks. things and in here um, it says newspapers magazines journals you can italicize or underline them and that's why I had a question in quotes okay so yeah well I I, I knew I knew that mm -hmm. but I didn't think that in a transcript you're supposed to do that because Going back to my legal days when I was a legal secretary, mm -hmm. before I reported, we didn't have all these, you know, we couldn't italicize stuff. We didn't have computers, so we had okay. to type. 
and things were put in quotes because you, you couldn't italicize and uh, unless you wanted to underline it and I didn't want to underline it <laughs> so I decided to put it in quotes. Okay. So it would be... But I'm not sure now. So now no. you're telling me that it's changed? It's, uh, yeah, it's italics or underlined. And that's a, it's a CSR question. Okay. Do you italicize it or do you underline it? Because it gives you choices. Are you going to have... this? What is a proper way to write Daily Princeton? And you're going to pick it. And one choice could be italics and one choice could be underlined. You pick the best answer, it could be either one. Okay, kind of tricky. But it's just something that you, can, that you know. Um, let's keep going. You, so y'all did find out. And once you find out something, like I googled it myself. So now I found something proper format for your titles, underlines, italics, and quotes. So I'm just going to print it. To me, it's easier to have my binder that I can refer to, or you can thumbnail them and you can have them as references. Um, and I will put this on the must. Little tips that I find, I'll try and put links to them on the must because I, that's what I want you to do. I want you to find things. Because when you're a court reporter and you're working at 2 in the morning and you're trying to get your transcript out, you don't want to look up, man, what do I do? Okay? That's the point. You want to be getting some sleep. Um, okay, so the quote was that the middle of the Columbia line was paper thin, according to the daily Princetonian. We want to make sure we have a good spelling for it. If not, we need to look it up. Okay? In the Tigers, S apostrophe. Okay? And, and guys, don't worry if I make eye contact with you. Um, Especially you, Missy. <laughs> yeah, but you won't again. Um, single wing. It's not a single offense. It's not a wing offense. It's a single wing offense. Okay? Lock serve as a blocker, comma, leaving gaping holes. Don't worry about that. There's no way we could have known that. Leaving gaping holes in Columbia's defense on the way to a... This is the way you would do scores. 47-6. Very good work. Some of you, I know you got that down. 47-6, wipeout. 56 years later, a grayer, this is the word, wider. I had some that said whiter because it made sense. He's grayer and white-haired, but it was whiter, okay? <laughs> grayer, wider locks sits in their Philadelphia law firm. That's how we could have figured out where this attorney's from. Philadelphia law office behind piles of client files. Black and white gridiron. It's not black gridiron. It's not white gridiron. It's black and white. This is this is an adjective for gridiron. Gridiron is one word. I, I don't agree with that at all. Okay. Okay. And you can agree to disagree. And if you you, you would have had no hyphens, no um, hyphens. Do you have black and blue marks on your on your arm? You have black and blue marks. Hyphenated. Well, no, because you can have black marks and you can have blue marks. But you, you can have, have white gridiron photos, and you could have. You, you could, but they're saying it's black and white, not just like. Oh, I think that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? It's, it, do, do what you want, what, you, what you're used to. When in doubt, leave out. That's why I left it. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, you know what? I, I never even either. hesitated. I didn't hesitate okay. at all. And you know what? Throughout this, there's a lot of hyphens in here. The reason this would be here, I see your point, Grant, is because it's not black gridiron, it's not white. It's a black and white gridiron. Photos of his savelt. Everybody got this. Excellent. Yeah, savelt. Exactly. New word for you guys. What? Anybody know what it means? Look it up. Yeah, like, what does it mean? Dinner. Okay, yeah, like, so we wouldn't, and, and let's talk about this. Some of y'all put the comma here of his Savelt younger self. It wasn't a comma in there. I can see it go either way, but his slender younger, could be a, your call. Yeah. Um, self looked down from a shelf. In the 1970s, okay, let's look at 1970s. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and hand out these. Um, these are just little tips on a couple of these. You always want to find yourself a good proofreading book. This is just one sample of, uh, uh -huh. but in here, uh, there's a couple of things that will help. sheet of this, the very back sheet of that handout, the last one, doesn't it talk about dates? 
<clears throat> on page 147, numbers are pluralized by adding the S. It used to be the apostrophe. I think, you know how things change with the years, things change. And uh, you can go with this now. It's, it, it, and the way you're going to know is the more you read the newspaper, the more you read different things, you're going to see the, consist the, the consistency. Nothing wrong if you choose to do it the other way. I'm just saying this is the way that it's done. That will be easier to, to stenotype because I put A-L-E-S from my apostrophe, apostrophe. S. Mm -hmm. And I always get, well, I always misstroke it and I get ice. Mm -hmm. And so this will be easier just to add an easier. S. <laughs> Okay, so in the 1970s, he brought some of the first lawsuits on behalf of pipe fitters, two words. I, I googled it and I did see one word in a couple of places, but then in Merriam-Webster, it's two words. Pipe fitters exposed to asbestos insulation. His firm eventually represented more than 16,000. You will always write out numbers above 10. I'm sorry, you will always put numbers above 10 as numbers. Um, not always. Uh, not at the beginning of the sentence. Very good. Not in the series, at the series not start. Not in the series. Okay. <laughs> I'll just need that back because it's marked off. So. Okay. Um, so <coughs> anyway, the 16,000 would be, and think about it, when you're doing uh, depositions, when attorneys are reading your material, they don't have time to give something quick. Give them something quick to see. 16,000 asbestos clients in 20 states. Above 10, it's, it's uh, numbers. In the late 1990s, here's another one. He, lead, he helped lead the Fen Fen diet. All you have to do, because we had Fen Fen, we had F-E-N, F-E-N, we had Fan Fen, whatever, but look it up and it is capped because it's a drug. So, it's well, my... I did look up a couple articles in the... They didn't capitalize back then in the articles that I read, so because I wondered about that, because I was going to capitalize it, but then I guess because it's the generic then like, so I don't know. Okay, Google it. Yeah, I just I just did, and there's an article here, and they don't. Okay, what about on dictionary spellings or something? You know, you want to make sure you get a, a resource that is. Yeah, like go to NIH or something. I like a bunch of different examples. I don't remember what most what it comes up the most. The most yeah. good idea. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I looked at Fintech, too, and it was spelled, like, three different ways on yeah. Google. Of course, I'd find it. Yeah, some of them have an opposite. They have the PH. Oh, some of them have an opposite, too? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. National Institutes for Health. Oh, okay. National Institutes for Health. That's a good one. And when you find a good website, you favor it. You put it as a favorite. And all you have to do, guys, is have your... The point is, you have a resource as opposed to someone asking you, calling you on the carpet, what did you find that at least you looked it up and you didn't guess? Okay, like the locks, L-O-X. Well, but did you look up the attorney? They just went on dictionary.com mm -hmm. and they, they don't have it capitalized, but then they also say code also and they have it opposite. They have the P-H. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, then that's going to be another call, so bring it to your attention. Okay, Fen Fen died, drug, and remember, this was just a human being that did this article and it passed editing and it may have slipped through that, did the same thing, and looked at the same website. Um, diet, drug litigation, comma, which culminated, this is what's very important. Look at page um, of that little handout. Look at page 93, the very first page after the, it talks about numbers. 12 million. You will always write your numbers like this. Six billion dollars, ten billion dollars. It's always dollar sign, number, and then the word. And you should, you're start seeing that in the newspaper more and more. That's the way it is. You don't write it out and you don't put the numbers. You know what I had a problem with there? Mm -hmm. Is trying to figure out it's like a two dollar a day habit. And I was wondering how come they weren't hyphenated, six billion dollar. It's a six billion dollar settlement, six billion modifying settlement, and six billion dollar being, you know, hyphenated. Because I, I, I believe it's because that's the proper way to write six billion dollars together, and then because you do have one that's hyphenated down here. You know what I mean? I, 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 I yeah, there. there you go. Billion dollar. Year nine point, This is this is the way you write the nine billion dollars though. So keep that together. Nine billion dollars hyphen a hyphen year business. 
It's not a nine million dollar business. It's not a business. It's not your business. It's that combined together. That's where you Yeah, I, I struggled with that. Well, and I guess it's like in your example, but if you say two dollar a day, but probably the dollar a day would be hyphenated because that's, but since it's just six million dollar settlement, there's yeah. really nothing. Be because that's the way you write. Well, I mean, I mean. Six, dollar, six billion dollar per year settlement, then it would probably be hyphenated. Okay. Yeah. Good. I agree. Good, good. Uh, now 75, comma, and I think I had a few students that might have written now, comma, 75, but the point is now he's 75, comma, Locks has earned a fortune in fees. In 2011, he had planned to spend more time with his grandchildren. Let's work on this right here, guys. There's really no way you can tell from listening. I'm just going to show you how it is here. As long as you have something, because there is a quote, and I think I marked up on everybody's page, but let's just work this together. So in 2011, he planned to spend more time with his grandchildren. Now he's quoting. Then these concussion cases started coming in, he says, period. Quote, I remember what it's like to get your bell rung. Rung. Proper spelling, rung. Okay. Make sure on your dictionary outlines you have a way to write, distinguish between the two. W-R-U-N-G. R U N G. Okay. Um, everybody was, I think, did pretty good on your its. You want to make sure you have a good thing on your its. And on page um, of your little handout there, I believe on page 140, on page 146, you've got the its there. And just as a tip, it's apostrophe S is always it is. It is something. And it's possessive is without the. So here we've got, I remember what it is like to ring, get your bell rung. Even an estimated 110 million Americans take to their couches. Again, 110 million. That's how you write it. You, yes, ma'am. I have a question on. Okay. Why couldn't you put the period here? Huh? Yes. It started? It started coming in. Comma, quotes, he says. How come there's not a quote up here, period, and then we started a new quote? Or is it, it says there's a period. You know what I mean? Or it says, says, period. Should there be quotes? And then, and then again, quotes. He, because he, he's giving two sentences, he's quoting two sentences. Okay. This is his first quote. Let me know if I'm helping answer your question. Oh, you? the quote ends after the end. Uh -huh. I thought it was the piece of quotes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, you got it. I can't see it there. <laughs> Good. Um, even as expected, 110 million Americans take to their couches for the 47th Super Bowl. Super Bowl is capitalized. Both the S and the B on February, you can spell it out. February 3rd, I think I might have said 3rd. It's okay to do the 3D. You just, this is your call on, on dates. I think the proper way to write it is February 3. Um, uh, Lox is waging a legal battle that represents the most serious threat to the viability. Make sure you have a good way to write viability. Uh, here we go with the hyphens. It's not a big football. It's not a time football. It's a big time football. So it's hyphenated. Um, on your little handout sheet, there's a little bit on hyphens on page 141. On your handout sheet. And, uh, you know, I won't go over it a lot, but what I would recommend is you had so many hyphenated words in here, I would write them in this little packet and start saving your research and figure out why, why you would hyphenate it. Um, you know, it's, use a hyphen to create a compound word. Uh, those are some compound words, but we're looking at, at compound adjectives or whatever they're called. Um, anyway, that's that's there so you can fill in some, some of your blanks there. Okay, so that was the first one. Big time football since an outbreak of fatal skull fractures back in the... It's not a leather day. It's not a helmet day. It's a leather hyphen helmet day. You see that? I don't know that I had too many people get that. I, I don't agree with it. Okay. Okay. 
And that's all right. But it's not a leather day. It's not a helmet day. It's a leather helmet day. Okay? Locks and a group of allies. Okay, everybody got the red mark here, I think, almost. <laughs> I know Grant, you got this one. Um, it's a group. They're allies together. So Locks is not the only plaintiff's attorney. There's a whole group of plaintiff's attorneys. It's possessive. It's <coughs> plural. So you got to have it with the S and then the apostrophe. Uh, on page 144 on your handout, there's some possessives. 144 and 145. And I'm only giving that to you so you have a reference source. Okay, like it talks about children's bosses, ladies, plaintiffs. If it said locks as the plaintiff's attorney is suing, then it would be a possible yes because he's the only plaintiff's attorney. Okay. So in the National Football League on behalf of more than 4,000, you want to remember to write 4,000 with the comma. Former players and their wives who accused, here we go again, $9.5 billion a year business of covering up. It's not life brain injuries. It's not altering injury, brain injuries. It's life altering, hyphenated. And I think, I want you to Google right now, life altering and life threatening. And see what they come out. I think I, I think life threatening automatically comes out with a hyphen. But look at life altering. See what that comes out as. And when you're googling your words, you want to find a really good dictionary you're going to be using, and um, set it up as your favorite. What are y'all finding for life altering? Mostly not. Okay. What about life threatening? Life threatening is hyphenated, right? Both of them are hyphenated. And the reason you would have it hyphenated here is because it's a <coughs> life altering brain injuries. That's a question. It's not. choose the, the the authority you know like you don't want to go to ask.com or something like that choose something like an institution uh, high, about higher learning mm -hmm. uh, an organization uh, even not a, not even a newspaper because newspapers I used to work for a newspaper and I know that they have different rules in different like countries and whatever so you can't even rely on that. Uh, library of Congress, you know, as opposed to a local library. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of, library of Congress is an excellent is an excellent source. Library of Congress. I write some of these down, guys. Well, library of Congress. The reason why I said Mary Webster because when I brought up Mary Webster yeah. paper thin, it hyphenated it. So that's what I'm saying. Is there one? As well, an it's, just, it's just, it's just, it's just a, like you said. It's did, did it? That's a good point. Did it say it was an adjective? Did it say? Um, oh, yeah. Did it give you choices? Because yeah. yeah. sometimes you have choices on the word. Yeah. yeah. What library is it, the Congress? Uh, the Library of Congress. Library of Congress. National Institute of Health. Or National Institute. Institutes. Library of Congress. Huh? You look those up. You, can, you found them on Google. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, no, I had those right. You look, you look, you look, you look. <laughs> I had them right. <laughs> library of right. Congress and who else? National Institutes of Health. <laughs> like when you're looking up medical terms? There's the other thing is the... Uh, Centers for Disease Control, the CDC. If you're looking for a lot of information on medical, there's another great. So, okay. And you know, the purpose of you being a corporate, you're, you're the researcher, you're like a detective, <coughs> a detective. You're actually going out there because you're going to have this throughout your transcript. So it's just a little baby piece. Okay. Um, but we do agree life altering brain injuries right here. Okay, this is this is something that you I tried to read it when I was dictating and I don't know that you would you caught it. You could do it with commas. This they did it with hyphens. I'm sorry, with dashes. 
Court reporting uses a lot of dashes. Despite, or perhaps because of, you can take that whole thing out, you don't need it. Despite of its inherent brutality, um, even these dashes wouldn't be correct. It should be despite, or perhaps because of, its inherent. But you see the point, it has to be uh, separated somehow, commas or, uh, and I added in there the hyphens, but, or the dashes. And I do want to tell you dashes, you know dashes are different from hyphens. Dashes are two hyphens. And dashes is what you use in court reporting. False starts, good. Put, it, put your dashes, because you're not going to be looking for missing words. When you have false starts, when they uh, talk and they're, um, and they're, and the witness is doing broken English or whatever, breaking up whatever his answer is, put those dashes, because you're not going to feel like you missed something. It's to protect you. Make your job easier. Question, Virginia? Okay. Um, inherent. Because of its inherent, I need y'all to make sure you have in your outlines a word for inherent. I-N-H-E-R-I-T and inherent. Brutality, comma, football remains America's most popular sport by far. Not only is the NFL the country's, I think I had one that had county, make sure it's country, and it's not C-O-U-N-T-R-I-E-S, it's country possessive. Single most lucrative sports enterprise, comma, the league, and it's 32. Again, we would have the numbers. Uh, and what do we call these? Arabic, what do we call them? CSR quiz. CSR quiz. The, those numbers are called? Ordinal? What? Ordinal? She said ordinal. There's an ordinal, a cardinal, a numeric. Oh. Ordinal. Come on, guys. We had that on a CSR uh, review question. What numbers are used for? What are these numbers called when you scripted? So, Google ordinal numbers, cardinal numbers. See if you can see definitions. And, and, and there's a method behind this. As we come across words that I remember specifically on, on our studies for CSR, I'm going to throw them at you because when we were studying for the CSR written, what do you call it? What does it say? What, does it give you an example of them? What are the cardinal numbers? See, one of them is like one, two, three, one. The cardinal number is a number that says how many of something there are, such as one, two, three, four. Okay, it's cardinal. And then ordinal? Ordinal. Isn't it like once? That tells the position of something in the list. First, First second, third, third, fourth. Good. Nominal is a number used only as a name to identify something. Like with the name, like uh, it was first or it was the... Okay. So we would, if you're wanting to distinguish between whether writing it out or putting it like that, we would do it in the Arabic. What is Arabic? It's the digits. Zero, okay. One, two, What's the difference between Arabic and cardinal? Pick your brains, guys. There's no zero? No, those are written out. Arabic, are these numbers the 32? What's cardinal? taken the written CSR yet, you got to have start your list of tabs and just simple little tips. You got to know what a cardinal, an Arabic, and a Roman numeral, and an ordinal number is. That's a question. It's a question. Okay. So cardinal, uh, so these are going to be Arabic. We'll go with Arabic. And you got to find the best answer. So cardinal may have been written out one, two, three, four, five, six. Arabic are actually the numbers themselves, the digits. That was just a little side note, guys. Okay, uh, the league and its 32 teams also provide an atrophying. Yeah, I didn't get that. Atrophying. I didn't hear it. Mm -hmm. And I. Atrophying. Say again. And then it's an atrophying. 
atrophied. Yep. Yep. And then I had one uh, that did atrophine, A T R O P H I N E. So I asked her, okay, so what does that mean? We looked it up, it's a drug. Okay, does it make sense there? Okay. Atrophied, atrophine. Um, atrophine, oh, did, who knows what it means? Atrophine? It's like a wasting. Yeah. yeah. Atrophine. Yeah. Like a wasting away. You're atrophied. You know, in medical, you're, when you have your hand in a cast, it atrophies, it gets smaller. Good. Good, good, good. Um, atrophy in television industry. With its, there we go, and it's again, possessive. It's most profitable programming and an ideal vehicle for selling cars, beer. I might have said beers on some of the um, outlines there. And erectile dysfunction. I want to make sure you all have dysfunction spelled correctly. I think one might have written it D I S. And I only say that because you want to make sure your outlines are correct. You might have your outline of DIS globaled as DIS whenever it has a word next to it, it's going to combine it. Just remember there's another DYS, dysfunction remedies. You don't need this parenthesis because there's no way you would have known that. The teams, I, I said evenly in some and I said eventually in some. So I think on some of these I wrote okay. I, mean, I put it wrong, but it, it's I read it both ways, I remember. Um, the terms evenly or eventually share broadcast and licensing revenue. Ticket sales are split in a manner favoring home teams. There's no way that you can tell where the paragraphing is, so we're not taking off here because it still, it still flows with that. But you do have a different topic a little bit further down. But anyway, let's keep going. This pecuniary, if you have your machines open and an eclipse open, what happens if you write PK? On your machine. Okay. What's PK? Anybody? Okay. Um, last night we were talking about, and I think one of Mr. Dean's old um, briefs for pecuniary was PK, and he got that from like a, a brief book. Pecuniary damages. Do you have one for pecuniary? Jesus. Okay, because you're going to get that a lot in damages in, in, in the courtroom. What were the pecuniary damages? Imagine, pecuniary. I have P-E-K-E -E with an asterisk for pecuniary damages. P-E-K with a D? And an asterisk. And what about just pecuniary? I don't have a brief for it. Okay, but you can make one. Yeah. Good. Mine is, um, my peculiar is P-K, but my pecuniary is P-P-K. P-P-K, okay, good. Think about having something for it, because you're going to hear it more. Very good. Pecuniary, and make sure you can spell it correctly. This pecuniary feast is what makes the NFL so attractive to legal predators like locks. This is continuing, guys. It's not a new para It's not a new sentence. This pecuniary feast is what makes the NFL so attractive to legal predators like locks. Come on. Although he and the other plaintiffs, here we go again. Are you getting it? Plural apostrophe. Lawyers say they have no interest in putting the NFL out of business. Now we're quoting again. Quote: I love football. Locke says, and I think when I dictated it, I specifically tried to have my stopping point there. Okay, quote, I love football, period, comma, close quote, Locke says, period. He's continuing the quote, but it's a new sentence, so you open the quotes again. No attorney ever said, comma, this is your single quote, so it's a quote within a quote. No attorney ever said, single quote, I love asbestos. Period, and you can make a note for your CSR written review. Period is always, always, always inside your quotes, whether it's a single quote or a double quote. Your period is always inside. Your question mark is questionable, but your period is always inside. So if you have a question on the written exam, and you have four choices, and it's going to give you this sample, and it's going to give you a sample with the period over here, and it's going to give you an example with a no comma right there, or it's going to give an example with no open quote. That's what you're going to look for on the test. You look for things like that that are obviously wrong. If they put the period on the outside, you scratch it out and don't waste your time on your CSR. You've got to, you've got to go really quick on your CSR. So what we're training you to do is find errors, scratch them out, don't waste your time. And, and that happens several times in our practice. So that's just a good point there, okay? That you're, It's in there. Everybody understand the single quote? 
So there's reason to believe the X players, here we have X hyphenated, and I think on page, on the hyphens that we talked about, on that handout, there's one that says whenever you have uh, those words, they always have a, look on page 142 on the handout. Use a hyphen with the prefix is all x south and you like so so I think I think I had a student that might have done x without the hyphen so you always have x hyphen x wife x husband x players x student and you understand why it's plural possessive because remember this lawsuit is a bunch of players that are filing suit it's not one player that was filing suit if it was it would be a possible yes any questions. X players, S apostrophe lawsuit could produce a reasonable settlement. I didn't do my nails. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look at that. And yet the litigation could still metastasize. I would put that somewhere to try and find a good way to write that. Um, a brief for it. I mean, if you do medical, I looked up a couple of things. And one was M O I F T, but it, that doesn't make sense to me. But if you're going to have it all day in a depot, you're going to find a shortcut. Metastasize is a good word to find out how to write. Probably M-O-I-F-S. M-O-I-F-S? No, M-O-I-F. I looked it up on the other I saw M-O-I-F-T, but I couldn't figure out why moist metastasize. Well, that way you can add on the G for ing. Mm -hmm. is that for but I couldn't figure out why M-O-I-F-T, because it didn't, in my mind it didn't register metastasize. But well, the F being the S. Mm -hmm. And I use that S. Yeah, I know. So think about that metastasize, metastasize, four words. As you're going through <coughs> exercises like this, take advantage of times when you're going to build up your dictionary with vocabulary words and perhaps a way to write. Pick up five words that you're going to be able to write. Okay? Metastasize and become life-threatening. Here we have the hyphen again. It's not necessary. They are in Kent Convinci it is. <laughs> okay. Grant will not have it on his. Um, I don't know if on the CSR, if it's supposed to be hyphenated, you would be counted off or not. I don't know. But I would petition it, correct? <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's not It's not modifying anything. But it's not modifying... It's not an adjective. But I think in the dictionary, it's... The litigation... No. The litigation could become life-threatening. Yes. But if you... Now, if it's life-threatening litigation, that's... Mm -hmm. I agree. Hyphenated. And I was marking, I wasn't marking off the hyphen, but then I looked it up in the dictionary, on some of the dictionaries, and it was, did y'all find it hyphenated? On some of the dictionaries? Okay. What part are we at? We're right here on life threatening. Life threatening what? Brain injuries? No, up, up further. Oh. Yet the litigation could still metastasize okay. and become life threatening to the game. If the NFL chooses to draw out the court fight rather than seek a swift resolution. A protracted, did we have any trouble with that word, anybody? A protracted battle could provide the plaintiffs. How many times if this was a test would you have missed yeah, plaintiffs? Four, five, on a test. When you thought, man, I got that test. You see how it could help? You know what I went back and correct was it. Good. ITS. Good. Good. So now you, and, and you specifically want to know you have a good way to write it, to, to distinguish it too. Okay, uh, protracted, provide the plaintiff's lawyers with an opportunity to reveal. Here we go. What's this word? Look it up. What does it mean? Because a lot, I think half, 50% heard the word sorted, S-O-R-T-E-D. Sorted may come out on your CSR exam, but let's figure out what does it mean. Ugly, dirty, sorted. What's the topic? How are we using it in the sentence here? A protracted battle could provide the plaintiff's lawyers with an opportunity to reveal sordid details. What were the details that they were concealing, that they knew since the leather helmet days that the, it caused concussions? Everybody there? Got sorted down as a new word of the day? Sordid details about a period during which they alleged the NFL intentionally obfuscated. I practiced that before dictating it. Said it just the way it says it, and I think everybody got it. Okay. I heard confiscated. Did you? Uh, okay. Or I guess I did. That's what I wrote. Yep, and I had one more confiscated, I believe, but obfuscated. What does it mean? Let's look it up. Google it. Hiding the intended meaning of communication. 
Say it a little bit louder. Hiding in, the hiding of intended meaning and communication. Hiding of intended meaning and of communication. It kind of sounds like confiscated. It kind of sounds like... You uh, said confiscated. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, that too. <laughs> you did too? Okay. Yes. But now you have a new word. It didn't word. really make so much sense in there, but I was like, I don't know. I, I had never been familiar with this word actually myself. Obfuscated. It makes sense. Confiscating evidence? Obfuscating um, evidence. Sure. <laughs> it makes sense. Obfuscated. Word of the day. Sorted. So just in that one sentence, guys, y'all would have sorted and obfuscated. Let's keep going though. Evidence of the, it's not a long brain damage, it's not a term brain damage, it's a long term brain damage, need the hyphen, suffered by its willing, here we got it's again, possessive, it's not suffered by it is willing gladiators, it's possessive. And I think a, a few have had trouble with the um, continuing here, but anyway, this paragraph looks like it could still go up here, no big deal. You do have to paragraph throughout though. If this is true, comma, and if the ugly particulars are played out in depositions, comma, internal documents, comma, and court testimony, such a legacy could alienate, how do I do with that word? Alienate, how would you write it, guys? Alienate, alienate, good. Alienate fans about uneasy, I'm sorry, already uneasy, about the suicides of former players such as Dave Dewerson, Andre Waters, and Junior Seau. If I was reading that, I would not have known. I would have thought that was so, like Bo, like your Bo, B-E-A-U. So I would have pronounced it so. So even as instructors, we have to do our job to be able to help you so you can figure it out. So I had to go and Google it and I had to listen to a commentator say the word Seau and write it in my notes. Same thing with Dewerson. I would have written Dewer, but it was Dewerson. So if you didn't know, and if I didn't know anything on how to spell these words besides pronouncing them, you can Google football players that committed suicide, and there's a list of them. How did you find somebody? That's what I did. Right? That's what I did. Yeah. Good. I just, Excellent. I just typed David Dewerson football, and, and, I, and I spelled it D-E-W-E-R-S-O-N, and, and I came out, <coughs> came out with the right spelling. Excellent. As long as you do something. And, and I, I do want to make another tip. I'm going to put this on my instructions too. I, I get this material from different locations, so you definitely don't want to get the article because it's not helping yourself. Found the article. Yeah. I didn't look at it. Yeah. That, I, I figured y'all would, but just don't look at I it. Just do the best that you I can. I didn't look for it. Yeah. You didn't look for it. Okay. Junior Say, all of them suffered from neurodegenerative. You don't need the hyphen in there. Neurodegenerative brain disease linked to concussions. So, comments. Excellent job, guys. I commend you. It was hard, but this is, I mean, how many things did we get today? Ten things, maybe, that might help you on a test? Maybe. Okay? So, this is what we want to do with our tests. So, it defeats the purpose if we're going to do it and you don't have the material, which is why we're going to do our test. Just the way you did this. You listen to it. You're done with your test material. You've already um, tried it out. So, we're not going to be cheating on our test. We're going to redo our test at whatever speed you want to get. You're going to listen to it again, and you can hear it. You can write it. Whatever you. I want a final product that you're going to do the best you can, and then we'll review it like this. And you know what? We will probably still find extra things that can help you. Okay. Again, it's not to lambast you and you know chastise you that you're not doing a good job. It's to help you to understand what you're doing to get you better. Okay. All right. Excellent. Very good. I got one.